Imagine a canal that changes how Europe does business, a prominent and bright pathway that makes trading more accessible and sets new standards for moving stuff around. We're talking about the Seine Nord Europe Canal, a giant leap forward from the old Canal du Nord. Built in the 1960s, the Du Nord needed to be oversized and broader to accommodate big modern ships. This problem sparked a brilliant idea. Why not build a giant canal connecting the Seine River to the Esco River, making it easy for considerable ships to get through? The 5.1 billion euro Seine Nord Europe project primarily focuses on improving the flow of goods between France and Northern Europe. It is not just about transporting goods to Germany, but about creating a more efficient and sustainable route for a broader range of European trade. The project spans a remarkable 107 kilometers and is set to be a game changer. Scheduled for completion in 2030, it will link the Oise River at Compiègne to the Dunkirk Scheldt Canal near Arlo. But what's so special about this canal that makes it a standout wonder in today's world? And why will it change how Europe trades forever? For years, France faced a significant challenge. Its existing waterways, particularly the Canal du Nord and the Canal de Saint-Quentin, needed to be improved for modern needs. These historic canals, relics of an earlier era, could not accommodate today's larger cargo vessels. The consequence? A surge in road traffic. Trucks are crowding highways, increasing pollution and congestion. Initially, the idea was simple but grand. Create a canal linking the Oise River at Compiègne to the Dunkirk Scheldt Canal near Arlo. This would open up a new path for larger vessels, easing the load on France's busy roads and reducing pollution. However, turning this vision into reality proved to be a roller coaster ride. Financial woes were the first major obstacle. The project, with a budget of billions, was massive. After the economic crisis of 2007-2008, relying on public-private partnership for funding became tricky. Costs were high, and doubts surfaced about whether such an expensive project was feasible. In 2012, a change in the French government brought the canal's future into question. The new administration scrutinized every aspect, from the costs to the need for such a canal. There was a real fear that the project might be shelved. But the engineers and planners didn't give up. They went back to the drawing board, rethinking their approach. They found a way to integrate part of the existing Canal du Nord into the new design. This not only saved money, but also reduced the environmental impact. After years of back and forth, the project regained momentum in 2015. Engineers were selected and a new, more cost-effective plan was in place. 2016, the French president authorized the construction, breathing new life into the canal. Despite earlier doubts and financial hurdles, the project, backed robustly by the European Union, the French government, and local authorities, is steadily progressing towards its 2030 completion target. This canal is poised to redefine European inland water transport, ushering in an era of increased efficiency and environmental consciousness. But what makes the Seine Nord Europe Canal stand out beyond these impressive statistics? How does its construction tackle the monumental task of reshaping the landscape, both physically and economically? Let's delve deeper into the engineering and environmental marvel that is the Seine Nord Europe Canal. This ambitious project isn't just about connecting points A and B, it's about redefining the landscape of European trade and setting new standards in eco-friendly transportation. The canal's path, starting from Compiègne in the Oise region and culminating near Arlo at the Dunkirk Scheldt Canal, is carefully charted to create a seamless link between the Seine and Scheldt rivers. This connection is vital for facilitating a more efficient flow of goods between Paris and the major ports of Dunkirk, Antwerp, and Rotterdam. One of the Seine Nord Europe Canal's most striking features is its sophisticated locks and aqueducts. These structures are not just functional, but also architectural marvels. The locks, designed to manage the substantial elevation changes along the canal's route, are feats of hydraulic engineering. The canal features six locks, functioning as water elevators, enabling vessels to navigate through varying water levels. 
These locks, including Montbac, Noyon, Cantigny, Alain, Marquin, Bourlon, and Oisy le Verger have drop heights ranging from 6.41 meters to 25.71 meters. The design of these locks integrates innovative water conservation techniques using attached basins to save and recycle water during operations. This preserves water resources and exemplifies the canal's commitment to environmental sustainability. Each lock chamber, approximately 200 meters long and 12.5 meters wide, can be navigated in about 30 minutes. This efficiency is vital in maintaining the smooth traffic flow along the canal. The construction of these locks, especially the ones more than 25 meters in height, marks them as the largest of their kind in Europe, reflecting the scale and ambition of this project. The giant lock, for instance, is akin to a 10-story building in height and can handle vast amounts of water with remarkable efficiency. A vital aspect of the canal's design is its integration into local territories, ensuring minimal disruption to daily life. This integration is achieved through 62 road and rail restorations, including bridges and underpasses, guaranteeing smooth and regular crossings along the canal's 107-kilometer stretch. These crossings are designed with varied techniques. Bridges are either beam or arch type, depending on the distance they span. The average span is around 80 meters, with some structures exceeding 100 meters. Certain crossings are constructed before canal digging to minimize disruptions, and traffic on existing structures is maintained until the new bridges are operational. This careful planning and execution ensure a seamless blend of the canal into the local landscape. The aqueducts, including a remarkable 1.3-kilometer stretch over the Somme, are designed to seamlessly integrate the canal into the existing landscape, ensuring uninterrupted water-based and road traffic passage. Poised about 30 meters above the protected wetlands of the Somme Valley, the bridge is designed to preserve the natural environment, including the river's natural flow, especially during flood periods. The construction of this bridge, set to begin in 2025, is a four-year endeavor accompanied by extensive environmental development in the valley, including afforestation efforts. With pedestrian pathways on each side, the bridge is not just a conduit for water transport, but also an integral part of local life, offering scenic routes for walking and cycling. The canal's design also considers the environmental impact. Efforts to minimize ecological disruption are paramount, the redirection of the Waz River over a 4-kilometer stretch is a testament to the project's commitment to environmental sensitivity. Moreover, the canal's water needs are sustainably sourced, primarily from the Waz River, supplemented by a large Louette reserve in Alain. This 14 million cubic meter reservoir is a critical component in ensuring year-round navigation on the canal. Designed with a keen eye on landscape integration and environmental considerations, the reservoir also adheres to stringent safety regulations typical of large dam constructions. The Seine Nord Europe Canal's 5.1 billion euro budget is financed by the EU, French government, local regions, and departments with an additional loan of 800 million euros. This funding reflects the canal's significant impact on enhancing trade and connectivity across Europe. The construction of the Seine Nord Europe Canal has faced significant challenges. Integrating this vast project into a historically and ecologically sensitive landscape, particularly areas affected by World War I, requires careful archaeological work and respect for historical sites. Environmental concerns are also crucial, with the project aiming to reduce CO2 emissions by shifting freight transport from roads to waterways. Strategies like creating new wetlands and conserving groundwater have been employed to minimize ecological impact. Also, as we mentioned, the canal's complex design involves constructing large locks, bridges, and a navigable bridge over the Somme Valley, demanding sustainable and durable engineering solutions. As we explore the ambitious journey of the Seine Nord Europe Canal, it's clear this project could redefine European trade and environmental sustainability. What are your thoughts on its potential to transform commerce and overcome its complex challenges? Share your views in the comments below, and remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more insightful updates. Thanks for watching.